Hello guys and welcome to another episode of our Suvarna Boomi campaign here in Europa Universalis 4 with the... I was about to say Game of Thrones mod. No, it is indeed the Mayo and Taxes mod. Uh, so I just want to start the episode uh, with saying sorry. Uh, I was editing the previous episode right now and I noticed my voice was a bit off because I think I spoke a bit too far away from the uh, microphone and... Uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, the microphone was also positioned a bit weirdly because I... Yeah, let's not go into details about why that is. Let's instead have a look at the world and see how the world has been progressing. Muscovy has united the Russian peoples under one flag, with the exception of a couple of people, like Paskov and Bryansk and... I mean, Bryansk might even be Ukrainian. No, 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 no. They're Russian, and they're being invaded by Austria. Right. France is continuing the conquest of England, so at this point the English have migrated to fucking uh, Dublin and established a capital, well, in Dublin. Because, yeah, I don't know, uh, this, will, this is a weird timeline where England somehow still exists, but they're not actually in England anymore. And Ireland is completely Irish, not even Northern Ireland is even... It's not even a hint of uh, English influence. And again, presumably, realistically, there would be some English l hanging out here. Yeah, there are Protestants, and yeah, there's no ethnic minorities, but there are Protestant minorities, which I guess gets to represent the English influence. What religion? I oh, never mind though, but then again, England is actually Catholic still. So, yeah, it wouldn't even make sense to call the English minorities Protestant, because they wouldn't be in this timeline. Huh. Orléans is reformed. It's still a vassal of France, though. I don't know why they haven't bothered annexing it yet. Because France is France is spooky at this point. The Netherlands have formed, though, but their borders are awful because of France again. France, you need to, like, you, you're annexing England. Maybe leave the Dutch alone, eh? Or do it like a trade of provinces. Like, trade these two provinces for these ones or something, you know. You, you can have Belgium, but you gotta have the... You gotta let the Dutch have the modern-day Netherlands, you know? The Holy Roman Empire is looking particularly unholy and un-Roman, so that's pretty normal. Austria is a mess, because it doesn't look like they have actually bothered inheriting anything, they're just conquering stuff like savages. Which, you know, well, I guess not savages, because that's exactly what we have been doing. Yeah, the Commonwealth formed. Um, Okay, interesting. So the Commonwealth has formed, but they have decentralized vassals. Of uh, Bryansk and Trakai. Trakai is an odd nation. It's it's re been relatively recently added into the game. It used to be a part of Lithuania. Look at that, there are even pagans hanging out here. Uh, not necessarily too unrealistic. 1631, you would think at this point in history they would the last the last pagans of Lithuania would slowly be exterminated. Uh, interestingly enough, they actually adopted Orthodox Christianity instead of um, instead of Catholicism, and somehow Cyprus has become Miaphysite. Right. I mean, sure. Yeah, Turkish Empire, Banu Rasi. All of this is super normal. Yeah, Banu Rasi is a Yemeni nation, I think. Which is why they're strong, because unlike modern-day Yemen, which is just a poor, poor place with no resources, uh, they do have a lot of people, which they still do today. And back in the day, people was, like, um, basically the best resource. So today, Oman might be stronger than Yemen, but that's because Oman has little people and lo a lot of oil, while Yemen has a lot of people and no oil at all. Seems like Allah, whatever, was a bit unfair when he divided out the oil of the Arab Peninsula. Mogulistan, oh man, I need to do a Mughal Empire campaign at some point. How fun would that be? I wonder if forming the Mughal Empire in this mod actually settles your tribe down. But starting out as like a tribal horde and then invading India and shit, and forming the Mughal Empire, that sounds like great fun. The Blue Horde is actually a vassal of the White Horde. I think they start out in personal union, no? Somehow they switch that up a bit. And there's still pagans up here even. Oh, nice. 
paganism is standing strong. Well, not strong, but they are. Well, maybe they're not. Even, maybe they're not even standing. They, they basically kind of still exist, but for pagans, I guess that's reasonable. Ooh, interesting. So we have a nation here called Vadai, and they're pagan, but they actually have Islam as a syncretic faith. I did not know you could do that as a, as a animist. I knew you could do that as Romova, which is the Lithuanian and well, as Baltic paganism basically. But I did not know you could do that as any. Well, I don't know if you can do it as any pagan, but presumably you can do it as a shamanist, because you can do like shamanism in this game basically is the same as um, it's the same as. Um, Tengri in the normal game. I don't know, there might be some shamanist area somewhere. Not sure. But nonetheless, very neat. Also, there's Catholicism blobbing about everywhere. Look at this shit. Catholicism in Japan, Catholicism in these random provinces in northern Manchuria. I guess at this point in history, this is still central Manchuria because of. Well, no, actually, never mind. No one has actually colonized these things. Are they Manchu? Or are they some sort of native... Yeah, okay, so some of the provinces are... Nikvil... Yeah, whatever that is. Some native uh, Siberian culture. Siberians enjoy having a huge diversity of cultures. Because, I mean... If you're stuck in, like, the middle of a forest and don't get to contact anyone for... a thousand years, it's, it's kind of inevitable that your little community ends up... Um, you know, creating its own culture, so... Also, this is interesting, the Fulani... Or, is this supposed to be like that? I guess maybe what's happening here is that the Fulani are... Or at the, the, the Mal Mali people are colonizing. Yeah, there's no real colonizable provinces here, are there? Well, not anyone that haven't already been colonized anyways. There's also this neat little split between the Luango, which are animists, well, with Catholicism as a syncretic faith, and then the Congo, which is actually Catholic. Nice little alternate history there. Well, I don't know, there, there is some histo historicity to the Congo accepting Catholicism, but how exactly, how widespread that actual, um, that, uh, spread of Catholicism in the Congo was, I do not know. Sadly, there there's no uh, history of uh, of Africa. Well, maybe there is actually. Mm. Well, th there might be one History of Africa podcast, but from what I listened to it, it was not very good, so I didn't really bother investing any more time in it. Man, I can't wait until colonization is really revamped and fixed. And we can... Oh man, colonizing... The New World and Africa and shit as a European. That sounds like such good fun on this mod with all of these like tiny little trade provinces. Glorious amounts of fun. But I want like the New World slave mechanics and plantation and you know all of that stuff that they promised that will be added to the mod. I wasn't super confident in the team after Demian left but uh, seeing what they, what they are planning and what they have been doing lately I'm getting my hopes up. I feel like the team has done quite a good job with this whole tribal stuff. Then again, I know a decent chunk of the whole tribal mechanic stuff was already written by Demian before he left. Um, but nonetheless, uh, there, there's good stuff happening in the mod. So my hopes are up. Anyways, in the previous episode, we conquered these two nations, Brunei and Selimbau. I think in this one, we're going to be invading Pasai. Uh, so I'm gonna take my trade navy and temporarily... Yeah, that's right, actually. It's currently being rebuilt, so I will wait for that, I guess. Well, actually, last time I checked, the Majapahit don't actually have a navy, but we'll wait nonetheless. Because I would like to block this trait so that I can annex and conquer this shit without being interfered with. Hey, we had converted the heretics of Sayak. And did that mean that they actually converted? As in, yeah, look at that. Majority uh, Theravada Buddhism. Let's go for this province. Uh, we might as well. It's not like we can actually core in it. Well, no, we can core some provinces. Well, this one province anyways. Yeah, we need, I'm waiting for the revolt. So I guess it would make sense to to have this revolt happen before we really start going for it. Uh, or any new wars, that is. 
put an end to these Cambodian separatists as well. Uh, they're barely making any progress. I, I sh I'm sure this this revolters will go down. I don't want to lose any autonomy over there, so I'm not gonna not gonna do that. This is kind of tragic, to be honest. Just complete and utter destruction of those Muslim rebels. Do we get the whole expulsion event again? Our ear is a martial educator. How nice! Come on, event. Give me, give me, give me, give me. No event. Come on, man. I want to expel people. Well, if we can't do that, we'll instead focus on upgrading our capital. Speaking of our capital, I realize now that we accidentally actually moved our capital to the... Well, I was about to say the modern-day capital of Burma. But it was actually the capital of Burma until 2006. After that, they moved it to some other place. Uh, which is pretty, pretty neat, because I did not know that. And so this is completely accidental. The capital was called... Yangon, or known as Rangoon in maybe English. I've, yeah, I, I heard it in the History of Southeast Asia podcast. Uh, it, w it was the episode where the Burmese conquered the place for the final time. And, you know, yeah, the, the last breath of the Mon Kingdom was exterminated. Uh, it's pretty neat. He, he mentioned that this, there, was, there used to be a little fishing village called Dagon. Um that was eventually uh, changed into Yangon which became the capital of Burma eventually and then there was also this awesome ass um, pagoda here in the city I wonder if we can actually find that well there's a pagoda here but it's not like a hardcore pagoda is it still it's neat so there you are accidental history right let me sort my navies out all right, so the war with uh, Majapahit it was good. Uh, I actually burnt them so hard that my game crashed, but you guys didn't have to see that. Uh, so we're going to take two provinces to link up our land with our future conquests in the north and cancel this vassal so that next time we can invade here we don't have to do all of this mess. It's good fun, of course, there's money to be made, but it's just like I can't be bothered at this point, to be honest. I just want to annex all of it and be done with it and build roads and shit. Which I need to do, because I have a lot of money and a lot of manpower. I'd like to spend manpower on something. Uh, I guess I could build more armies, but they cost money, and I don't want to waste my money. Uh, yeah, well, separate piece this guy. Do do that. A lot of aggressive expansion, of course, but who cares? Actually, maybe Vijayanagar does care, in fact, about my messing about. No, actually, no, he doesn't. He does not give a single shit. Ah, that's why he doesn't care, because fucking Wajapahit converted to Islam. There you are. Huh. Interesting. And historic, I guess. This means that we can finish up this war once we have our diplomat back, which will be in five days. So, there we are. Full annexation and all your money. And, yeah. No, no that's it. That's That's all we want. All we are asking for is your complete destruction. We are reasonable men. Alright, sweet. Now we take the spoils of war. That was a bad idea. Because I already have a lot of money and I do not have a lot of stability. So what on earth am I doing to myself? I'm going to get that stability immediately back though. But we're actually pretty close to level 2 stability. So, eh. I don't know. Still though, I'm getting interested now. I um. I'm really getting interested in, in the idea of invading Delhi. The 23 technology? Holy shit. We're two techs away from being <laughs> 10 ahead of them. Yeah. An invasion of Delhi. That definitely looks like it has to be a thing. Just burn and loot and... Oh my god. What glory. What money. Yeah, uh, let's see, where would I even build roads at this point? Uh, I mean, because, yeah, the coastal things should be served by coast, right? Then again, it would still make sense to have a sort of coastal road, wouldn't it? I'll say I'm building transports, because, you know, I was thinking maybe to punish the Majapahits a bit further, but I decided against it because I couldn't be bothered to wait. Took this island, by the way, which is really not a fan of my existence. So yeah, I need, I need those boats so that I can ship people over there. 
But yeah, roads. I guess we could keep the road up here going. Yeah, there's some ever so slight autonomy reduction. Uh, we could also upgrade existing roads. So there's a road here. So I guess, yeah, this one is the next one to be built. Contribute some manpower. So we're gonna get a road there. Uh, we should just keep it going, I think. Yeah, waste that manpower. All the way to the north. So oh, this one actually already has a road. Oh, there you are. Don't think we need one all the way up there. That would be a bit of a waste. Um, I don't know, maybe we should build like a coastal road that just goes all across this coastline here. Because a decent chunk of these provinces do not have ports. Yeah, fucking hell, this province does not even have a port. We should remedy that. Get a, get a trade wharf. So that's nice. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a city and it doesn't have a fucking port. God damn. Then again though, I do want to upgrade my bureaucracy actually. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna get a rank 2 capital. I'm not sure if that is actually worth it, but I want to do it anyways just because. So there's no road here. Yeah, once again, that seems like a silly thing. There's barely any autonomy there, of course, but you know. I feel like we should reduce barely any autonomy to no autonomy. Yeah, no, sure. What the hell. Onwards with the road construction. So yeah, I'm gonna do this crap off screen, I think. Ah, shit, what did I just do? I cancelled the boat construction, didn't I? God. Fucking damn it. <laughs> this is a fun little bug. So I sent my ships to protect trade in the Moluccas, and they have insta decided to sail off the edge of the world. Oh, GG. I like how the, the, the very, like, the, the lines that signify that a boat is about to travel are like, they're widening, <laughs> and then they're contracting it down, down here, so, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's weird, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if they'll actually sail to the edge of the world, or if they'll just fuck about a bit, I don't know. Uh, where are you? You're here. No, uh, no, they're, no, they're still going. Oh, nope, there you are. Change, they changed direction. As long as they don't take attrition in these foreign seas, it's all good. Are you fucking rebels gonna rise up soon? Because, like, this is getting old. Well, it, it got old ages ago. You guys need to rise up so that I can go invade India. I swear this game is so fucking fucked sometimes. Like sure game, spawn the rebels in like the province the furthest away from any fortification so that, I, so, that so that there's no fucking way I can actually defend it. And yeah, let's just let's, let's just spawn some fucking shit rebels on the islands. While we're at it, just to make me consider suicide that much more sincerely. Man. Look at that, 10 years... God, this this empire of mine, man. It's getting out of hand. I'm getting flashbacks to the whole uh, Ilkhanate campaign that did not end because I was defeated or anything. It literally just ended because I got sick of fighting rebels. Uh, and then I just sort of, well, yeah, it's fair enough to call it a rage, rage quit, because it was, but it was not a rage quit because of true legitimate challenge. It was simply that the pain in my ass got to a point where I could no longer tolerate it. All right, cloth industry specializes again. So we're going to keep doing silk, try and get one of those uh, bonuses. Once again, I don't actually want silk bonuses but I, I sort of somehow ended up focusing on that and so I'm just gonna double down at this point man this has been a rather spicy episodes the uh, the nobles have uh, yeah all of the three main estates have asked for privileges and I've rejected them all the time and I lost two stability from that I think it was only the bur only the burgers accepted the stability loss without too much hate on their side so, yeah, offer favors, present a big ass fuck gift, just because I don't want them to ask for any more privileges. I don't know, maybe we do want to ask them, or give them some privileges at some point. Um, something that wouldn't massively hurt me. 
but there's yeah well we could do the whole exclude most commoners from the cabinet generate a few high court titles that that wouldn't hurt too badly we're not gonna do that we're not gonna do that honestly what I need to mm, Now we cannot do that. God. Actually, I should be revoking shit from these guys, shouldn't I? I mean, of course, what I really need to do is to start demoting more greater nobles so that this whole problem of mine will lower itself because the greater nobles have way too much power in my nation. So every time they start asking for privileges, it hurts too much for my comfort. So we're gonna do that. Might be might be time actually to do that. The thing is, it's a it's like a ten percent thing or twenty percent or something like that. So the more stuff you conquer before you do it, the better off you'll be. It looks like to me, which makes sense or whatever. Um, so might want might want to blob a bit more, but then again, I need to do it multiple times to truly get my nation into a comfortable position. So. Yeah, must have one stability. Yeah, we don't have that right now, of course, because of the fucking bullshit nobles. Yeah, oh, I don't know. Hmm, getting some nasty, nasty flashbacks to the Ilkhanat campaign. It's almost like I'm expanding too much at this point, to be honest. Uh, my nation is becoming too big, and I'm having too many revolts. And the revolts aren't challenging; they're just fucking annoying. Anyways, though, we have been building some nice roads. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I have shown you the road that goes in this general area before. There's no optimal way to really show it perfectly. I guess we can check the autonomy map mode and see if it actually, like, shows up on the map mode. Don't think... Uh, well, I'm not sure if it actually would, but... Eh, maybe. So, yeah, road there, there. And then the road goes there, right, and that has a noticeably lesser autonomy than these two, but these are tribal now? No, they're burger actually. Oh really. Yeah, this one is burger as well. Okay, well there you are. No road there, so I don't know why this province has such low autonomy. There's no road there. Road there. There. I mean seems to be other things that are more important than roads. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It seems like roads are mostly for fun. <laughs> I don't know. Put down another road in this province. Get some manpower there. Just to link up this whole thing a bit more effectively. Uh, these, like, mountain bullshit provinces, I doubt they will ever be, you know, not super autonomous. So I'm not going to care too much about that. Honestly, conquering this whole place might have been a massive mistake because the autonomy here is so large that it's like hard to even get anything from it. Like it, it costs me more to pay for these provinces than they're gaining me. But you can see like the general borders of modern day Thailand here are gaining me cash as well as the Malay Peninsula and Burma, except for the northern part of course, which is all tribal and non-statified. Good point actually. No, I do have these estates. Well then why are they so Mm, so fucking autonomous. Autonomy is actually gaining itself. Fortification is increasing its. Controlled by greater nobles. That seems to be a big thing. Eastern monarchy education. Eh, I mean... Why is, that not, why is that not the case here? Eastern monarchy... What's the main difference. Yeah, it looks like it's the fortification to be honest. So maybe having fortifications in these big ass cities is a mistake. I should instead build fortifications here for example. We can do that. So like construct a fort. Meme some manpower into it. So there we are and then we can tear this down. Presumably no, okay, I guess it's the local fortification. Ah, fuck me. That ah, yeah, it, yeah. It's the local fortifications that are doing it, not mine fortifications. So that was a that was a waste of money. 
I mean, I guess it's closer to the front lines, I guess, but eh, it's still stupid. Oh well. That was dumb. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I'll end the episode here and go to bed. So, thanks so much for watching this episode, and until next time, bye.